Hey friends, hope you had a great weekend. I really do. Our son got home from the hospital, no infection that we can see on the surgery that he had, and we were just resting and recovering and now starting our new life with him having a feeding tube and trying to figure all of that out. For anybody who cares about my personal life, which in case you do, there you go. In case you don't, let's go ahead and talk about today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Synergy, which is an app that lets you control multiple devices using one single keyboard and mouse. With my new home setup that I'm doing, because I have to be home more to help with my son and everything, I actually have two PCs right here, and I can use Synergy with one mouse and one keyboard to control this PC as well as that PC at the same time. That's my benchmarking rig. Synergy on that, Synergy on this, and I can control both. And if you're not on Windows, that's okay because they also support Mac and Linux so that you can control whatever devices you need. It cleans up your desk clutter. It makes sure that you have everything you need. You don't need a fancy KVM switch. You just need Synergy. Check them out at the link in the video description. Pick up Synergy or Synergy Pro with the SSL encryption if you happen to need that at the link in the video description. Big thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. Big thanks to them for allowing my desk setup to be a lot cleaner because I don't need to clutter everything. And now let's talk about the news, which big news. Go check me out on Twitch. I should be live by the time this video goes live. So just come say hi if you're watching this video right now. Come say hi to me on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash UFDisciple. It'll be linked in the video description. But we got some RTX 3080 and 3090 news. And this is official news, okay? We were waiting on NVIDIA to come out with all of the details on September 1st, but this is one of the partners that NVIDIA works with that came out and officially confirmed what we had heard from leaks previously. And we've gotten pictures of the PCB of these cards to confirm it. So first up, the RTX 3090 PCB has been pictured. It shows 11 memory modules, which will be GDDR6X, which I'll talk about that in a second. And there's a few things things that are changed, but we have a lot of pictures. They actually put an Intel CPU over the actual die so that we couldn't confirm everything, but a lot of it is there. So the leaker is claiming that this is a colorful GPU and that the colorful is a brand not typically sold in the United States anyways. So we can get into it. First up, it looks like the NVLink fingers are going to be slightly different than they were before. Then we also have the GDDR6X memory modules, as you can see around the PCB. The PCB size looks pretty good. We also have three three eight pins up at the top, which because this is a colorful card, this wouldn't be the Founders Edition that we're expecting, which is supposed to have that 12 pin power connector and also have the unique PCB shape. So this is going to have a few different things. That three eight pin power scenario up at the top left doesn't bode well for these things running cool at all. But you can see there, there's the die shot with an Intel CPU covering it up. And so that's what we have right now. But let's talk about the confirmed part, which is the GDDR6X from Micron because they unveiled GDDR6X, which had been a rumor up until this point, as well as the next generation of HBM. And they confirmed, at least we think they did, the RTX 3090 name. So the anticipation that it could have been the RTX 2190 because of NVIDIA promoting 21 days, 21 years, and then RTX 20 to 21 would just make sense. According to Micron, that wouldn't necessarily be the case. However, it could also still be called the RTX 21 series, and this is just the internal naming that Micron's been going by. But we can see right here, GDDR6X is going to be run on the RTX 3090. It's going to have 12 placements, 19 to 21 gigabits per second, which is insanely fast, and potentially crossing that terabyte per second memory bandwidth, which is crazy. That's exactly what the Radeon 7 had. So if we have 12 placements, that's 24 gigabytes at one terabyte per second, which is crazy fast. That is more VRAM than the Radeon 7 and just about the same speed. So that would give you all of the advantages of AMD's highest end compute card that they've released to the consumer. And then you get the RTX 3090 speed, which we're expecting to be quite considerably faster than the RTX 2080 Ti. You're getting a lot of goodness. However, the fact that it's gonna have 24 gigabytes of really fast RAM doesn't necessarily give me all of the confidence that it's gonna be cheap. So we'll have to see how that plays up. But them sticking at the $1,200 price point for the 3090 might not necessarily be the case. So buckle your wallets up for that and buckle your wallets up for the next generation of VRAM that Micron also talked about, which is not GDDR6X, that's coming out for the Nvidia stuff. They talked about HBM next, which is a weird name of calling it. HBM 2E is currently on some of the fastest GPUs out there like Nvidia's A100, it runs is very fast. HBM Next will run about 25% faster than the current HBM2E and about 50% faster than the 
regular HBM2. So it's going to be faster and it's supposed to come out towards the end of 2022. This likely won't matter for end consumers like us. This will be more in the data center realm of things. But we also have an RTX 3080 being spotted in a benchmark running at 2.1 gigahertz, which will likely be very fast. It also looks like it has 10 gigabytes of memory at 19 gigabits per second. And then obviously the GPU running at 2.1 gigahertz itself. That's a lot. That's that's a big boy. So the RTX 3090 should be at the very top. The RTX 3080 or 3080 Ti should have both a 20 gigabyte and 10 gigabyte VRAM amount. So this would be the lower end 2080 super replacement. And then we'll have more all the way down. But the 3090 would be the highest end one with 24 gigabytes. But also we should get a version of this with 20 gigabytes. But that's not the last bit of RTX news we have. No, my friends, Gamers Nexus published a video over the weekend where they talked about how they've had conversations with board partners, motherboard manufacturers specifically, about how Intel has actually hurt NVIDIA's launch of the RTX 30 series because they are not out with Rocket Lake as of yet. And Rocket Lake, is it Rocket Lake or Comet Lake? I can't keep them straight. The next generation of CPUs that was supposed to be on Z490, because in case you don't remember, Intel's motherboard support PCI Express 4.0, but the chips do not. So the motherboards are higher end than the actual CPUs. And it's expected that NVIDIA's GPUs are going to be on PCI Express 4.0. And it's expected that they're going to be fast enough that they're going to actually saturate PCI Express 3.0. So they're actually going to need that, which means that the Intel CPUs that they've been using to show their benchmarks will actually be too slow to show off the full range of performance of the NVIDIA RTX cards. It's a whole uh, interesting set of ideas and conclusions that motherboard manufacturers might be a little ticked off for NVIDIA for. We'll leave a link to Gamers Nexus video right up there or down in the description. You can check out the whole 21 minute video to get the full breakdown. But there's more breaking down coming with regards to ARM and NVIDIA. And by that, I don't mean that communications breaking down, the communications ramping up, breakdown as in cash flow. I'm, I was trying to make a good segue, it didn't work out. ARM apparently is in advanced final exclusive talks with NVIDIA to be purchased by them. So it does look like this is moving forward. And by the end of the summer, it does look like NVIDIA could own ARM and then have to to be subject to antitrust regulations to make sure that they're not going to monopolize anything. So Intel versus NVIDIA, whew, we'll have to see how that goes down. And then we also mentioned in an episode of Hot News on Friday that Apple had kicked Fortnite off of iOS because of them violating the 30% financial agreement that they had. We didn't mention that Google had banned them at the time because that hadn't happened by the time that we recorded. I'm sure you heard Google also removing Fortnite because of them subverting the financial tactics. But to replace your Fortnite addiction on the Play Store, you can pick up Civ 6, which has officially been ported to Android devices. You can pick that up. There's Civ 6 launch trailer for Android now out. Make sure your device can actually run it. But in case you wanted that, you can have it. But you can't have software updates on your Huawei phone anymore with the US silently killing the program that allowed app developers such as Google to provide updates to Huawei devices as of August 13th. That quietly expired and it is illegal for Google and all of the rest of them to provide updates to any Huawei phone. So yeah, that you're, you're done. It's over. If you had one that had the Google Play Store, can't have it anymore. But there's some good news when it comes to Google software coming out there. Chrome is apparently looking to improve your battery life even more than they were previously. They're going to be working with a meta tag that would allow websites to switch on energy saving features on your laptop to potentially bring out more battery life for that. But you're going to need more battery life in your heart because you're going to have to replace or not replace. You're going to have to use one app in the place of what used to be two. But it's not a good thing. In my opinion, Facebook is starting to do their merger of Instagram DMs with Facebook Messenger, now allowing you to uh, see your Instagram DMs on Facebook Messenger. And then eventually they will merge them all together. And then they're also going to be bringing WhatsApp into that fold. So it's going to be an unholy trio of messaging devices that you you don't want. This, this is too much. Just keep them all separate. I'm OK with that. They're separate apps for separate purposes. Don't mix them, please, Facebook. I don't. Why did you have to buy them? But this is an app update you're going to want if you own a Tesla vehicle. They're going to be bringing out two-factor authentication sometime soon. Authentication. Uh, actually, both are uh, legal pronunciations, authentication or authentication. Anyways, Elon Musk tweeting out, sorry, this is embarrassing late. Two-factor authentication via SMS or authenticator app is going through final validation right now. Wow. Could have your car stolen if somebody stole your phone and that could access your Tesla app. And then you, they could just drive away. Dang. 
phone's your key. It's not good. Then just a little bit of AMD news. It appears, at least according to rumors and leaks, that the A520 motherboard should be launching tomorrow, August 18th. It's August already. Holy crap. You can see the breakdown of A520 versus B550 and X570 right here on the screen. Doesn't look like they'll have PCI Express 4.0. Won't have overclocking support, and that will be just a entry-level board that will support this generation Zen 2 and then Zen 3. I don't see many people picking this up. It's probably not going to be one that, that matters to a lot of people more OEMs than than normal uh, enthusiasts. Anyways, let's talk quickly about Monster Energy potentially leaking the price of the Xbox Series X because they had a Halo Infinite Monster Energy campaign that begins on September 1st. And then they had all of their terms and conditions, which showcase that the total approximate retail value of all first prizes, which are 500 Xbox. Xbox Series X's is about $120,000. Well, you divide $120,000 by the 500, or excuse me, 200, my bad. You you divide the approximate retail value by the 200 Xbox Series X's that are being given away, and you get a retail price of around $600. Monster said that the MSRP of the Series X is not final, and then this is just approximate, but that's a high approximate price. Series X, $600, big yikes. But not. I don't know if this is a big yikes for you, but the Intel Avengers C CPU collaboration is now live. Tristan Eaton, the artist who helped bring the box art to life, is helping to bring the Marvel's Avenger Collector's Edition packaging of Intel chips to real life. But if you just go through the Twitter thread, you see what most people think about it. You know your company is absolutely lost, then things like this are allowed to happen. If you're looking for a sign that Intel can't compete, here it is. Maybe Ant-Man can show them how to shrink things down and get to 10 nanometers. Oof, you're gonna need some water for that burn. And you're gonna need to update your Horizon Zero Dawn in case you're having some issues because the new patch 1.01 is now out and it has fixed a few known issues and will hopefully uh, make things better as they're moving forward. The developers do appear to be listening with regards to the crap that was wrong with the game and you might be able to get that fixed. Anyways, with all that being said, that's the end of Hot News, my friends. Don't forget to come check me out over on Twitch right now. Big thanks to Synergy for sponsoring this video one keyboard and mouse for multiple devices windows mac linux doesn't matter check them out at the link in the video description pick them up get the app make sure you simplify your life with synergy and i'm gonna simplify my life by jumping out of here i'm i'm done it's the end of hot news you guys have been great